good evening. This is CTV News for Tuesday, January 31st. I'm Denise Douglas. And I'm Patricia Valone. Glad to have you with us tonight. Well, just weeks after two liquor board officials were charged in a federal corruption probe, numerous proposals are being vetted to overhaul the current system. County Executive Rashern Baker says he'll seek control of the Prince George's Liquor Board, assuming responsibility for appointing the five-member panel. Baker plans to submit legislation this week to the county's House delegation. The measure would compete with a proposal by the governor and another introduced yesterday in the Senate delegation. Baker's bill would effectively remove the governor and local uh, senators from the process. I think what the county executive is proposing, what we're proposing, is very substantive. Putting all these folks under the county ethics laws, requiring more professionalization of the people appointed to the board, professionalizing the whole operation. So I think this is real reform that we're proposing. And you think it, these two bills will come together? I think so, absolutely. The county executive and the senators are very close together, uh, and it's real reform. Now, earlier this month, the governor made changes to the appointment process as part of his ethics reform package. Well, several Prince George's lawmakers are looking to once again make changes to the County Board of Education. Delegate Carolyn Howard and Senator Anthony Muse are sponsoring legislation that would repeal the massive overhaul of the school system passed in 2013 with the support of the county executive. Their measure would revert the board back to an all-elected body and strip with Baker of his appointment powers. However, not all of the delegation's members think such drastic me measures are the way to go. Well, there's a report that that original bill, they put it um, where this hybrid board, when the hybrid board was created, part of the legislation, it states in there that a report must be written and submitted um, to the legislature. Um, and basically that will take effect and take place the end of this year, 2017. So why not wait and see what is the response? How is it working? What does the report say before we act? And Delegate Geraldine Valentino Smith is also sponsoring legislation dealing with the school board. Her bill would establish an unpaid task force to study the issue and seek public input and then make recommendations on the best method of selecting school board members. Maryland senior U.S. Senator Ben Cardin says he will vote against the nomination of Senator Jeff Sessions to be the United States Attorney General. The Democrat says the nominee's record on civil rights and women's health care give him serious reservations about how Sessions would advise the president when it comes to issues that threaten American civil liberties. During a Senate Judiciary Committee hearing today, Democrats pushed back on Sessions, while Republicans, including Senator Lindsey Graham, defended Sessions, saying he is an Honorable man. A vote on the issue is scheduled and postponed until Wednesday. If the nomination clears the judiciary panel, it will then go to the full Senate. Meantime, officials in Prince George's say they've been hearing from residents concerned about recent actions taken by the Trump administration. County Executive Ashern Baker said in a statement that President Trump's recent orders are having a direct and consequential impact on the community and local economy. Latino Affairs Liaison Daisy Rickert says her office has received dozens of calls and emails from people who fear for their safety. We want to ensure that all of our county residents, uh, no matter their immigration status or legal status, that they feel comfortable, that they feel safe accessing county government services and resources. And really the bottom line is, is you know, the executive orders uh, that were recently signed by President Trump uh, could potentially have an impact on local governments from a budgetary standpoint. With the hiring freezes, we understand that we do have a large uh, population, uh, you know, of our residents who do uh, work for the federal government. So, you know, what does this mean? Um, and this could certainly have, uh, you know, like I said, some some implications uh, at the county level. In his statement, Baker also criticizes Republican Governor Larry Hogan for remaining silent on Trump's controversial executive orders. Well, Congressman Jamie Raskin has co-sponsored a bill aimed at taking the bite out of President Trump's travel ban. The Statue of Liberty Values Act, also known as the Solved Act, would defund and rescind Trump's order, which covers seven Middle Eastern countries. In a statement, Raskin says President Trump's anti-Muslim ban is arbitrary, punitive, hazardous, and unconstitutional. Raskin goes on to say that no refugee or immigrant should be denied entry into the U.S. because of religion or nationality. Meantime, on the Senate Senate side, Senator Chris Van Hollen joined a number of his colleagues who are sponsoring legislation that would also block the president's actions.
Well, you are watching CTV News. I'm Denise Douglas. And I'm Patricia Vallone. 